Hey, what's up? In this video, we're going to work on 14 different examples of solving multi-step equations. Now, when we're solving multi-step equations, when the variable is on the same side, what we're looking into doing is just simplifying down the equation to a two-step equation. Because right now, it's called a multi-step because we're going to have more than two steps to solve our equation. So you can see in this first example, um, on this right-hand side, we have 5 plus 13b minus 13. Well, if you think about the inverse operations of b, you can see it's being multiplied by three, it's being added by five, and it's being subtracted by 13. I don't want to apply my inverse operations for every single one of those operations. It would just take too long to solve this equation using our typical method. So my goal in this case is going to be to simplify our equation down to a two-step equation. And I'm gonna do that by combining like terms. So as well as rearranging our terms. So in this case, I can just rearrange this equation as 5 minus 13, actually let's just do it this way. Let's do as 3b plus a 5 minus 13. Now again, it didn't really matter if you want to do it the other way, um, but again, that's a positive 5, that's why I'm writing plus 5. And when I simplify this though, 5 minus 13 is going to equal 8. I'm sorry, a negative 8. Now you can see I'm in a two-step equation. So now I can solve using my inverse operations, reverse order of operations, as well as my properties of equality. So I'm going to undo subtracting an 8 first by adding an 8 to both sides. That'll give me 21 equals 3b. And then I will undo multiplication by dividing by a 3 on both sides. So therefore, 7 equals to b. Or you could say b is equal to 7. Now in the next example, you can see that I have a parentheses. And in addition to that, I have a negative, basically a, I'm doing 8n minus this whole quantity, 2n minus 3. Now, if I want to solve using my inverse operations, I got to get rid of my parentheses. So the way to do that is to understand why do we have parentheses. We have these parentheses because this negative, or we're subtracting this whole expression. So what I'm going to want to do is distribute this negative. And again, you can think about that negative as a negative 1. So therefore, that'd be a negative 1 times 2n, which is a negative 2n, and then a negative 1 times negative 3, which is going to be a positive 3, equals 12. And you only need to distribute here between that expression. Now, I have two variables. Well, again, if we're going to use our inverse operations, we have to only use inverse operations on one of the variables. So I'm going to combine these because they're like terms. They both have a variable n. So 8n minus 2n is 6n plus 3 equals 12. Now we're at a two-step equation, so I can subtract a 3 on both sides. 6n equals 9, divide by 6 on both sides. n is going to equal, and you can say that can be simplified down to 3 halves. All right, in the next example here, um, I'm going to have 4 times y minus 2 plus 6, so I can distribute here. And that would be a 4y minus 8 plus 6 equals 0. Um, so now you can see I distributed, and now I can combine my negative 8 and 6. So 4y uh, minus 2 is equal to 0. Then I'll just add the 2 to both sides. 4y is equal to 2, and then I will divide by 4. y equals 1 half. Okay, uh, for next one, again, you can see I, we're going to be applying this distributive property. So we are going to um, distribute here and the negative 2. So negative 2 times 2t is a negative 4t. And negative 2 times a negative 1 is going to be a positive 2. So you can see by eliminating my parentheses, I've now created a two-step equation. And then I'll just subtract a 2 here. And therefore, that'd be 13 equals a negative 4t. And again, I want to undo multiplication of a negative 4. So I'm going to divide by a negative 4 on both sides. That cannot be simplified, so I'm just going to leave that as a 13 over negative 4. The negative could go in the denominator, it could go out in front, or it could go up top. It actually does not matter. And then also you could just rewrite that as t equals a negative 13 fourths. Okay, so you could just rearrange that as needed. For question number five, again, we have one of those negatives here. So again, here's a problem. A lot of students want to just subtract the five, right? Now, you could use your inverse operations here. You could distribute this. But also, if you notice, this is actually very similar to a two-step equation. Because what's happening here is, out, since you only have one operation outside, and you could distribute it like we did before. Or in this case, you could actually just divide by negative 1 on both sides. Because what happens here is this negative 1, you're undoing the operation outside the parentheses. 
So therefore, you're just going to be left with what's inside the parentheses, which is w plus 5, equals here a positive 14. Then you could subtract a 5 on both sides. So this is in the uh, multi-step equation because if you were to distribute the negative, it would be a multi-step equation. But technically here, you could actually make this a little bit easier by undoing the operation outside the parentheses in this case. Since that was only one operation and it was multiplication. You wouldn't want to do that in our next example here. And again, let's see, what does that give you? That gives you a 9, right? So you can't do that in this operation here. Um, you can't divide by negative 1. Um, for there because that's not going to uh, work in that case. In this case, you have more than one operation outside the parentheses. You have an 8n as well. So in this case, we're going to distribute the negative. By distributing the negative, I get an 8n minus 2n plus 3 equals 12. Now I can combine these like terms. So that's a 10n plus 3 equals 12. Subtract a 3. 10n equals a 9. Divide by 10 on both sides. And then you can say n is equal to a 9 tenths. Okay? Um, now let's go ahead and work into, well, let's kind of go into this one. Question number 13, um, you can see that here we have now have a b on both sides. But again, we can go ahead and sub combine these two since we have two of those variables. So therefore, 13 equals 5. 13b minus 13b is going to be a negative 10b. And then I will subtract the 5 here on both sides. So therefore, I have 13 minus 5, which is going to be a positive 8, equals a negative 10b, divide by a negative 10. And then you could obviously reduce that fraction, divide the top and the bottom by 2, and that will give you a negative 4 fifths is equal to b. All right, so now let's go and work our way all the way back up to question number 7. Now, question number 7 is looks pretty complicated because not in addition to having more than one variable, we have parentheses as well as brackets. And so we have two sets of grouping symbols. You can see here that um, we have two sets of grouping symbols. We have the um, parentheses as well as brackets. In addition, we have two variables, n, on the same side. So to do a problem like this, basically remember, if we apply the operation of multiplication, right, that's the reason why we have these grouping symbols. The reason why this n minus 1 is grouped together is because we're multiplying 5 times both of these terms. So to eliminate the parentheses, all I need to do is just distribute my 5. So when I'm going to simplify this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from the inside out. So I'm going to distribute the 5 here first. So I'll do 2 times n plus 5n minus 5 equals 14, okay? Now you can see I have like terms, and I can now combine the n plus 5n. So I have two brackets, that'd be a 6n minus 5 equals 14. Now it's very similar to one of those problems where there was only one set of parentheses, right? Now I just need to distribute the two. So therefore I get a 12n minus 10 equals 14. Add a 10 to both sides. 12n equals a 24, and now I can just divide by 12 on both sides, and n is going to equal 2. All right, so let's go and take a look at the next example, where in this case, instead of having parentheses and brackets, we just have two sets of parentheses. Now, again, we could kind of work through this a little bit differently, because since there's only one operation, we could either distribute, like we did in this last example, but again, since I only have one operation outside of the parentheses, I can also just undo those operations. So I'm actually going to work this out two different ways, so therefore you can kind of see how things work. So the first way I'm going to do it is just kind of like this unpeeling. Now, again, you can only do the unpeeling when you only have one operation outside those parentheses. So when you have multiple operations, like over here, you can't just divide by four on both sides. You would have to use your inverse operations. So what I'm going to do here is I have negative three times two times d minus 12 equals negative 36. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to unpeel this by undoing divided by negative three. By dividing by negative three here, I now that's going to give me a positive 12. Okay, then I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides. Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So if I d minus 12 is equal to 6, and then I can add a 12 to both sides, and d is going to equal 18. Perfect. 
Now, what about what else could you do? Like, what if that was that doesn't make sense to you, or you maybe make a mistake? How could you like verify your answer another way? Well, again, we could do it just like we did in the last example. You could just go ahead and simplify from the inside out. And that's pretty much the typical form that I like my students to focus on anyways. Um, but sometimes there's you know little tricks like the one here that I worked on. The problem with this method is students will use this method on a problem like this, where there's more than one operation outside parentheses. So they incorrectly will apply the kind of trick. So in this case, if I distribute here, I would get a negative three times a two D minus, oops, let's rewrite that a little better. So that'd give me a two D minus 24 equals negative 36. Then you could distribute the negative three. So two D times negative um, two is a negative 60 negative three times 24, so 24 times two is going to be a 48, so that'd be a positive 72 equals a negative 36. And now you have a two-step equation and you could go ahead and solve. So you subtract a 72 on both sides and you'd have a negative 6D equals a negative 108 divided by negative six, divide by negative six, and guess what? D is equal to a positive 18. So there's two different ways here to work on that problem. For question number nine, you can see this negative two is the only operation outside of the parentheses, so I'm just gonna make this easy as possible. I'm gonna divide by negative two here, so I get a three X plus nine is equal to a negative 12. Subtract nine, three X equals a negative 21, divide by three, x equals negative seven. And again, you could distribute that if you wanted to and solve it that way. Um, in this case, rather than distributing the two thirds, I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is three halves. So therefore that's gonna give me a c minus 18 equals, well, again, multiplying an integer times a fraction, seven times three is going to be a 21 over two. Now I need to add the 18 to both sides. Now this one, is we need to understand that we can't add um, 18 to 21 halves, right? But we do recognize that if I wrote 18, if I multiplied that by two over two, that would give me 36 over two. So 36 over two is the same thing as 18. But the important thing about writing 18 as 36 over two is now I can add it to 21 over two. So that's going to give me a 57 over two, which is our final answer. Question number 11, we're just gonna be combining our like terms here on the right-hand side. So again, you have a 5C and a 2C, so I can just rearrange them and just write that as six equals 5C minus 2C minus nine. Therefore, six equals a 3C minus nine. Add the nine to the other side. 15 equals 3C, divide by three. C is equal to five. In this problem again, we can just combine our p's here. So 17 equals a p minus three p is equal to a negative two p minus three. And now I can just go and use my inverse operation. So I'll just add a three. 20 equals a negative two p, divide by a negative two, and negative 10 equals p. And then last but not least, ladies and gentlemen, we have two variables over here. Seven p plus eight p is going to be a 15 p, minus 16 equals a 59. Um, and then we'll just add a 16 to both sides. So 15P is going to equal a six, that's going to be a 75. Then we will divide by a 15 on both sides and P is gonna equal, and we have to think, all right? How many times does 15 divide into 75? Well, we know that 15 goes into six, let's say that's going to, or 60, that'd be 15 times. So therefore I can say that that is going, or I'm sorry, five times. So therefore if I multiplied by six, um, that would give me there. So P is going to equal to six. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, that is 14 examples of solving linear equations when you have the variable um, on the same side. Look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.